This discussion is about the Pico format of question. We are still in the discussion of the first stage of evidence-based practice. That means we are asking questions. And when the clinician is confronted by a situation where he needs to conduct an assessment or history taking to a patient, he must be able to extract an information. And when we and we say the clinician must be able to to come up with the result of clinical inquiry, then he must have a researchable and answerable question. And that is in the form of PICO question. PICO is the main uh, abbreviation here that must be filled up. And the two letter T are just uh, optional here. And PICO question must be remembered as a tool that will aid and help the practitioner, whether he, a nurse or a, a medical doctor, in coming up with, with the researchable and answerable research question. Because PICO will help us to describe the clinical issue. And that clinical issue is what is the problem. And in the search for that evidence, to support a claim, then the researchable question must be translated into a well-written question. And that is a must. That uh, Because this well-written question will help us and guide us in a systematic and efficient search in the databases. As you may see, whatever form of uh, evidence you want to look at, whether it is a research, whether it is a random controlled trial, a case study, a cohort study, it's, it's basic and it's mandatory that you need to have a well-written question in a PICOT format. PICOT format must not be considered as an EBP project, but rather it is a tool that will aid the clinician in coming up with a researchable and answerable question. Let's look into the details of what is this PICO format of question. We have the letter P, which stands for patient or either a person, population, or a problem. The letter I for intervention. The letter C for comparison. The letter O for outcome. That's already PICO. And the letter T will be the type of studies. And one thing more, can either be the time or the type of question. Now let's take, let's let's take a look into what what exactly is the meaning of this population. That letter P can either be this, 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 or that. That's problem, person, and it refers to their age, the age of the the uh, the characteristic of the patient. How old is your patient? Is he a male or a female? Uh, the ethnicity. Okay, can either be. Uh, a health issue, whether your patient is suffering from a particular problem of diabetes or access to health care. And further, this letter P for population can be a person, a location. If it's a person, we have discussed that it can either be how old is your patient, is he senior, and what's the location of that problem? Is it within the community? or in the community dwelling or either the letter p can stand for a condition of the patient and one of our typical example there is the history of falls which is very common among geriatrics or pediatrics and take a look at this we will follow this through in the next examples now in intervention intervention is always uh, considered as a treatment the treatment that the person, the population, is having a problem with. Now, the treatment or interventions can either be in the form of drug, either a surgery, or even an educational program, or a policy. And this will be looked into settings and geography. And further, the intervention must be classified as to how long will that intervention will be. Uh, is it is it a full program or is it just a fall prevention program? That's what I'm saying a while ago. That history of falls. 
This is a one typical example here that we are following through. And the location of the intervention, where is he going to be treated? Is that going to be uh, an immunization to be done in the community or just a follow-up in the community health center? And the intervention, by the way, when we speak of intervention, that is uh, quite synonymous with the word rehabilitation and treatment. And this is all about the letter I. And the letter C is a comparison. What are we trying to compare here? We will compare now the intervention that will be done to the patient. And that intervention can either be a common practice or a no intervention at all. So what are we going to compare here? A common practice and a no intervention at all or either an optional. Further, when we talk about intervention, we will, we will compare one, one treatment with the another treatment. Let's say, for instance, the traditional treatment or the rehabilitation, let's say, uh, let's take COVID-19 as an example. Okay. In COVID-19, the tradition, uh, what, what usually is being observed is that home uh, quarantine is what is usually prescribed to a patient having uh, a manifestations of uh, COVID. And the other would be, it can either be treated with medication or be confined in the hospital. Either a remdesivir or hydrochloroquine can be given compared with the other traditional rehabilitation. Now, in the case of Paul, traditional can just be done at home by resting, elevating, while the other one, as being compared, is through physical therapy treatment. So, as you may see, another intervention is being given here. And what we are comparing here can either be a placebo or a no intervention, or a placebo can either be a treatment with no particular effect. You may commonly hear that as another form of, of comparison. And the location of the intervention, where is it being done? Is it in the hospital? Is it in the community? Is it at home? This is what we're trying to compare here. Now, with respect to the outcome, we will be talking about what is the effect of the intervention thereafter. Let's say, for instance, to control the blood glucose and the BMI, the patient can either be um on a diet or ex having exercise or even be given a treatment of medication and what will result the result would be a very good blood glucose level within the normal limits the same with the bmi and in an outcome the falls that we we're talking earlier will be decrease in incidence and as well as the severity and in the outcome it would be better if the patient can avoid the hospitalization. And in the type of studies, we have two letter T's, as I have mentioned earlier. One T is a type of question, and the other is a type of studies. Or some other authors are saying T stands for the time, how long is the intervention being done with the patient. Now, in the next slides, we will be talking about we will recall what are the types of questions, although we have discussed this during the previous video. We will try to recall this and the type of studies with respect to the PICO format. Okay, at this point of our discussion, we will be going back to the foreground questions or the way on how we format the foreground question because we will be talking here of the types of a question in different domains in relationship with PICO question. Uh, we, have, uh, we have discussed this in our previous video. However, however, at this point, we will talk again about the different types of question in different domains in relationship with the PICO format of question. Because when we create a PICO question, we shall be able also to, to identify what kind of questions have we created. And in doing so, we have to be reminded again of the following types of question. The intervention, okay, 
the prognosis question, the diagnosis question, the etiology question, and the meaning questions. Okay, so when you created a PICO, you shall be able to know if that is an intervention, we talk about the treatment, we talk about the therapy, if that is the prognosis, then we talk about the outcome. Your PICO format is geared towards what is the result of the intervention. Or either your PICO question is focused on what are the tests that has been done to the patient and you're comparing those tests. And if it is a theology, what is the causation or the reason? Okay. And the meaning question is about the experience. And we shall be able to see that in the kind of a PICO question that we have created. Again, we need to know what kind of a questions shall we be creating and what kind of evidence later on shall we be talking about. Because in PICOT, there are two letter T's. One is about the type of question, which is right now we are talking about. And the another T would be, what would be the type of evidence okay, that we need? At this point of discussion, I will, I will uh, present to you the level of evidence or the hierarchy of the level of evidence in comparison with the type of question together we will we will relate that to picot now what i'm trying to say is that a while ago we have discussed that there are different type of questions and that at the left side of this slide you will see that there are types of clinical questions with picot example now again let us recall what are the types of clinical questions. We have the intervention, we have the diagnosis, okay, we have the treatment, we have the etiology, prognosis, and the meaning. And at the right side of this, we will compare that type of question with what would be the evidence or what type of evidence shall we be looking or searching if that will be compared with the type of clinical question at the left. Now we will be having a thorough discussion of the levels of evidence or the levels of evidence, the hierarchy of evidence in our next discussion. But in the meantime, let us try to understand that for every picot question that you will make, there you must be able to classify what is the type of question that you will be able to make. And in relation to that, it will be matched with what type of level of evidence. Now, the level of evidence, when we speak of a level of hierarchy, when I say hierarchy, that means the order of who is number one, who is number two, number three, and that must be in order. What is the strength of evidence that will be given? Now, let's take a look at, uh, at uh, the type of question at the left. We have the intervention question and we have the diagnosis question. I will not focus on the example, but I would focus on what type of intervention is enumerate or enumerated here. That is at the left side. We know the type of clinical question based on the PICOT example. Okay, so we have clarified that. And then the next question there would be, what kind of evidence are we going to look if the type of our PICOT question is intervention or diagnosis? And this will be the answer. Number one, you are going to look for the systematic review or the meta-analysis. And that is number one in the hierarchy. That means this is the strongest evidence if your clinical question is intervention type or diagnosis type. And then down to the level of RCT, or random control trials, the non-RCT, the court study, the metasynthesis, the qualitative and the descriptive, which is the most common researches that we can find. And the last would be 
the expert opinion from the highest or the strongest level to the last. You will only resort to number two if there is no available number one. And that's how we deal with that when you have intervention question or diagnosis question. Now, what about if your question is prognosis or etiology question? What kind of evidence are you going to lose to look for in the hierarchy of evidence? Let's take a look at that. Um, one, you have to look for the synthesis or cohort study. Again, all of this will be discussed later on in our in the second stage of EBP, which is the access. If you are having a prognosis type of question or an etiology question, then these are the sequence of the evidence that you have to look for. Number one, you have to look for the cohort studies. And then you have to look for a single cohort studies. And then the metasynthesis of qualitative and descriptive studies. And then you have to look for the single qualitative, descriptive, and the final and the last would be the expert opinion. Now, what about if your type of question is a meaning type of question? Then you have to look for the following sequence or level of evidence. Metasynthesis of qualitative studies, single qualitative studies, synthesis of descriptive, and single descriptive studies. Now, for purposes of PICOT question, understanding very well your PICOT question, we have compared one at the left, the type of clinical question, with at the right, the level of evidence or the hierarchy of evidence. At this point, we have arrived at uh, the most important part of uh, uh, evidence-based practice lesson, and that is how to actually formulate your PICOT question. As a nursing student taking up evidence-based practice, it must be your skill to know how to actually translate that uh, clinical issue into an answerable or researchable PICOT question. So you better be ready. You have to understand this topic very well or probably you may not learn a lot of things about evidence-based practice if you will not be able to understand this. So you better listen carefully. Now, we have here a template that will guide you on how you will answer or how you will uh, look into the details of uh, a clinical issue. First, you have to classify what kind of a question or a picot questions do you have. And these are the types of questions in your picot format. Now, you may use this template to easily understand the component of a PICO or the PICO format of question. Now, let's take an actual example and let's analyze this as to where here is the P, where here is the I, the C, the O, or if there are T and another T in this type of example. Now, read with your, silently with your eyes and analyze. And I'm giving you some time. Okay? You may read now. Okay. So, at the end, I would like you to know where are you going to place your P, I, C, O and identify what kind of a question or a type of a PICOT question is this. Okay, let's analyze the, the example. First, let's talk about the patient or the problem or the letter P. It says here, it is so uh, clear here that he is mentioning about the patient. How will you describe that patient? He is living in a long-term facility and he has a pressure ulcer. So this is the descriptor of our 
patient. So we will put that letter P. Again, what kind, how will you describe our patient? He is living in a long-term facility and he has a pressure ulcer. You know what a pressure ulcer is. This is a break in the integrity of the skin if you are lying in one position without moving, especially those patients who has a, a neuro problem. Okay, so we have the letter P. Now let's talk about your letter I. Okay, so letter I pertains to intervention. Now from the sentence here, where here is the intervention? Again, the problem is pressure ulcer. And the intervention is that there is a program created to that. Ulcer prevention, pressure ulcer prevention program. So we will put there the letter I. So we now have the P, we now have the I. And then we will go with comparison. What are we going to compare? We are going to compare the intervention. What is the first intervention? Ulcer pressure ulcer prevention program. We will compare that with a standard of care. What do you mean by a standard of care? That is, if you are a nurse, you will very well understand that if the patient is lying flat, okay, in a supine and unable to move, then you have to turn the patient every two hours. So we are comparing here the standard or the pressure ulcer prevention program, whatever that program may be, with the standard of care. And this is the description of standard care. Okay? And we will put letter C to that. And then what will happen? What will happen to a patient? Okay. If you use what is the expected outcome? Then it will affect the signs of emerging ulcer. So you may notice here it's now complete. We have the PICO and the two are optional. At this point, we don't have the letter T. Now the next question here is. How will you classify this as a type of question? Now, I want you to take closely. What are we going to? Comp what are we comparing here? The standard of care and the program that they have mentioned. So definitely, this kind of a question is a is an intervention type of question. Now, let's take some more example. This is the second example. I want you to read it silently with your eyes. Okay, let's try to decipher now. Where here is your P? Let's talk about the P. It's obvious the P for the patient. How will you describe a patient? A patient is having a deep vein, suspected of having a deep vein thrombosis. You know what a deep vein thrombosis is. Thrombosis is there is a clotting of blood where if that is a deep vein thrombosis, probably it will be on a lower extremity or in any other part of the body. So that's how we describe your letter P. That's your patient. Now, where is your eye? Your eye is an intervention. The first intervention is a D-dimer assay. This is a laboratory test. A D-dimer assay will locate where is that thrombosis happening in your body. So this is the first intervention. Let's put the letter I. Now, what are we going to compare? We will compare the D-dimer assay with the ultrasound test. So we will compare which one is better in determining the deep vein thrombosis. Is it a D-dimer assay that's being done in the laboratory or the ultrasound that is being done in the radiology department? We will now put our letter C here. So we have now the PI, the CN. The remaining will be the O because we are after the outcome. What is the outcome? Which is more accurate between the two. You are asking here in your question, is it the D-dimer or is it the ultrasound? At any rate, what are these that we are talking about? We are talking about A diagnosis so this is a diagnosis type of question so you may see it's easy however you really have to analyze this and you should have an idea of what we are talking about before you can analyze this okay let's go to the third type of example I want you to read it silently with your eyes okay First, let's talk about who is the patient and what is, what is the descriptor of the patient. 
The patient is an obese patient and being described as having greater than 30 kg BMI. Okay, so that's the P. We will put that as the P. Now, where is the intervention? The dietary carbohydrate intake. That means you are undergoing the patient who is very obese with a body of 30 kg will undergo dietary diet of carbohydrate intake. And that we will put that as an intervention. And what are we going to compare now? Imagine that, 30 kilograms, greater. Here, we will be comparing that to uh, less than 25 kilograms. We will predict from the word predict. I want you to know that predict is a word that will tell you. Okay, let's first put the letter C. So that we know what we are comparing. We are comparing a dietary carbohydrates with, we are comparing, by the way, we are comparing those patients that is obese with this kind of weight and this kind of weight. And that the outcome will be expected for six months. So there is the word predict here. Now my question here is, what type of a question is this? From the word predict, this is a prognosis type of question. So, the, the, uh, the task here is where to put the PI, the CNO, and what type of question is this. But, but if you are going to, to have a clinical issue, you're not just going to place the PI, CNO, but rather you are going to make your own PICO question based on what type do you want to make? Okay, let's proceed with the next example. Read it with your uh, eyes silently and then analyze and we will go to interpretation. Okay, so where is the P? Who is now the patient? We will put the letter P to a pear-skinned woman. Okay. So, a pear-skinned woman is uh, being described as he has a prolonged and protected ultraviolet ray exposure. So, that means she's been, she's been staying in the sun for longer than one hour. And she still gets the pear skin. Even though she's exposing herself to to a sun, okay, for greater than one hour, and the other one is we will rate it as the intervention. Now this will be compared to a woman who has a darker skin, okay, without unprotected. Can you imagine this? This one has a prolonged, and yet he has a fair skin. This one is without exposure to ultraviolet rays and she got a darker skin and we will put that as letter c as comparison because we have compared this and what will be the outcome the outcome is that it is possible that she can have a skin cancer which she might have a risk of melanoma so what have we compared here this is a pear skinned woman. This is a darker skinned woman. Uh, what is the reason why they become, why, why, why the first seem to have a pear skin and the, the, the second seem to have a darker skin? This is a question of etiology. Because the causation of being pear skin is a prolonged exposure while becoming a dark skin is even without a prolonged. That is indeed the question. Okay, so there we go. That's uh, the end of our discussion for the PICOT. And I am expecting that uh, uh, you shall be able to form your own PICO format of question based on the clinical issue or the clinical inquiry that you may be able to get. And that you have to acquire that skill. And in your assignment, you are just uh, expected to identify which... And where is the P, the I, the C, and O. But more than that, you are expected to formulate your own question.
That's all folks. This has been your nurse radiological guru saying thank you for watching and enjoy studying.